Welcome back to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. As you can see, we back at the crib on the plush leather. <laughs> Feels good to be back home after the trip to DC. Got a special guest today, McDonald's All-American. Took his talents to UNC where he led them to a national championship in 2005. Solid NBA career. A little bit. A little premature in my opinion. We're going to get into that. But balled overseas. Big three won a chip with an MVP over there too as absolutely, well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> we <know>. got <laughs> the legend, Rashad McCants in the building. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Before we get to the interview, we got to just start with the fit. You came in here decked out with the crown, with the Kobe jacket, with the matching Kobe shoes. We're going to do it. We're going to really let y'all see. Oh, man. This, is, this is what makes him legendary, bro. you always going to remember him. I'm telling you. Where you get the crown now? I got to ask first, though. It's a story, man. It's a good story. Um, we was in Vegas after the Big Three Championship. Right? Okay. And uh, me and my homeboy, we was at the Dre's nightclub. Somebody left one of those little party city crowns in the booth, right? And I just kind of picked it up. I put it on. Walking through the casino, everybody's saying something. This is your birthday, all that. And I'm like, you know, whatever. Got in the Uber, asked the Uber driver, what if I had a real one like this? Would I look crazy? She's like, no, you actually look cool. And I looked them shit so right then and there, man. <laughs> and I ordered one, and I put it on, man, and then it fit. It fit. It fit my soul, man. It fit everything about me, man. So it's like, I got a red. And ain't nobody else doing it. Can't nobody else pull it off. So I'm, I'm like, let me let me do it. You're right, because no one, like, like that's the best part about you. Like, you just have this whole different, it's a whole different demeanor. Yeah, yeah. That nobody, it's just, it's just, like, you know, like when you see someone doing something and you're like, they only have, they only have the swag to do it. Everybody else will look goofy. And I know people want to say something about it, but then again, it's me. Like, for years, it's been, like, against the grain. I've always been against the grain. But, like, to, to wear the crown after winning the championship, undefeated, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Winning, the, you know, hitting the game when it was only fitting. It was like, until y'all knock me off the crown, you know what I'm saying? It's mine. Yeah. I'm going to wear it. I'm going I'm to I'm stir some shit up. You know what I'm saying? I, just, I like doing that, You too. came in with the mask, too, right? See, that's what it was. That's... That's that's the only reason, like, back then the big three started off. Like, when you was coming with the mask, I was like, that's, damn, why did I not think of that, man? That's some sh- I would have came into the season with a mask man. on, yeah, bro. At, the, at, the, at the point then, it was like, we already won. So it wasn't really no crazy motivation to go, like, back to back or nothing like that. I wanted everybody to feel what it felt like to, like, kind of revitalize that playing spirit, mm-hmm. win, win something, you know, be about something. So the second year for me was about entertaining, mm-hmm. bringing more fans in, bringing guys like mm-hmm. you and Nate and them to want to play in it. So it was like, we have to give some type of entertainment value. Mm-hmm. And that was like, all right, I'm going to wear the mask. We could promote ourselves any way yeah. we want to on this platform. Mm-hmm. I wanted more guys to understand that, like, you don't have to be so dry. You know what I'm saying? Be a character, mm-hmm. come out, create some type of brand for yourself. And I think I, I did that when mm-hmm. I was there, when I, when I kind of amplify who could come in and watch us play, who was interested. Now everybody playing harder because mm-hmm. it's an insult if a nigga come out here with a mask on. Like, yes. you know, Nate was insulted, <laughs> you know? But I came out here to insult you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to wear the crown every single game <laughs> in the lobby while I'm eating. You're going to be reminded every time that you mm-hmm. can't beat me until you beat me, right? So I like to stir the pot. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts about going full, coming to America, get the little flower girls with you to, to drop the rose petals on your joint wherever you are? Oh, I'm waiting on that. Okay. I mean, we gotta get we leveling up. <laughs> we leveling, leveling up. up. We, we trying to be leveling up. Level you know what I'm saying? We gotta start somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Come up here, kick it with Gil. Hopefully mm-hmm. the flower girls was watching. You feel me? So I mean, we were gonna have to go debate. I mean, I think it's pretty evident who you rocking with. So I want to ask you. When you look at this GOAT conversation, is there any player currently who even has a chance or potential to get to that level, get into that debate? Man, oh, hell yeah. Who you think? Yeah, uh, Ja, 100%. Ooh, okay. Um, Luca. Um, you got to kind of say Giannis just because of the size. It ain't so much the skill set, it's kind of like, where the game has evolved to, mm-hmm. so he's gonna be he's gonna be one of those guys. You got Durant, who all you know always gonna be there. But I like to break the game down more than when you talk about goats. Mm-hmm. People ask me who's the hardest person you ever had to guard. Yeah, I say Gilbert Arenas, mm-hmm. and they say, 
really? And I'm like, he's a goat. And, my, and when I look at goats, it's people who you could not stop. They had to stop themselves. AI, mm. uh, Tracy, Vince, like the people who were just dominant in their skill set, didn't have to really go in there and hone their skills and be in the gym, be in the gym, just show up like Booby Miles. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those were goats to me. These are guys who could go out there and try anything and it looked good, you know, and, and, and still play the game and know the game. So my goats are always going to be different when it comes to that, like, you know, the Kobe's, the Gilbert's, the Paul Pierce's, you know, um, Hakeem Olajuwon's, yeah. you know, people who got the skill set to back up the talk. So, you know, what's so funny when when you look at media, picks versus player picks, always different, right? Because the players are the ones that's actually guarding each other. So when you hear people say different names, the people look at stats and be like, mm. those stats ain't what, <laughs> what you need to be looking at. It's like how you have to guard this person, how we had to prepare for this person. So I remember, um, you remember that year, not taking anything away from Curry's first MVP. Players voted James Harden, mm -hmm. right? So they said because James Harden was actually harder to guard that year, plus the White Howard was done, he had to carry the team and they were still second in the West with nobody on his team. That's the MVP. Yep. But they gave it to Curry, who had like five games, he was five games better. But it was one of those things where if you look at the players versus the media, it's, it's totally different. Man. I love that conversation because you, you get a lot of the loud mouths that don't play that side with the stat side because mm -hmm. you don't know how, to, how hard it is to guard a Gilbert. You don't know how hard it is to guard a, a Luca or a Ja by yourself mm -hmm. on the island. And that's why I say when we were playing, the schemes that were set, the counters that had to be measured, it was harder to guard guys because we were playing team ball but also depending on our best defender. Mm -hmm. And when you're a good offensive player, you look through everybody. Yep. So it ain't even like, <laughs> you're not even thinking of no scheme. You're thinking, where am I going to get my shot? Right. And so you look at the game today, and it's like, it's more open. Guys can do what they want to do and go where they want to go. They don't know how to defend it yep. because it's a, coach's, it's a coach's league still. But it's turning and becoming a player's league where the players can open up the floor. The big men can now shoot threes. The guards need to start posting up mm -hmm. more because it'll open their games up. Um, but it's, it's, it's where the players can dictate where they want the one-on-one -on -one and the ISO to be. And now you need players coaching those players. Mm -hmm. Coaches can't coach those because it's a, it's a dinosaur game. Yeah. People don't really, oh, that's, that is a great, you need these, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's there's no offense against some of these older coaches. We hated right? to play ball like that. They, Think about it. Like it's, 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 it's a, it's a clash right now because we clash. Yes. Against those same coaches. <laughs> we didn't want to do that. Right? We want to hoop. So now you have hoopers yep. in the league now. You got to remember when, when you're talking about when we played that four man and that three man was usually designed for damn near defense. Yes, yes. You gotta remember, your Bruce yes. Bowens, mm -hmm. was it um, Avery, was it Avery Ivory, the guard from uh, um, Atlanta? Uh, um, or Roy Ivory. Roy Ivory. They put him in yep. for four or five yep. minutes, yep. right? You can't do that in today's game. Those Bruce Bowens are, like they try. Those, Bells. those old school coaches are trying it and you wonder why your player 35 minutes, four points, getting molly whopped. You're off because the person he's guarding is trying to go for 30. Man. So you got 30 versus this four, Man. right? And he played great defense, right? So it's like you need the generation that just left to go back and coach these kids. Yep. But if you look at all the players' coaches, the Willie Greens and all of them, mm -hmm. they're succeeding because they understand this game. Them old, them, them older coaches, y'all are out. It's outdated. It's like. Like even like somebody like um, who was a great coach was it uh, Avery Johnson? Yeah, it's like having him coach right now, like that. Wayne Casey, yeah, like, <laughs> Detroit, so old ass out of here. The game moved. The game has moved two decades from them, but they're still they're holding the players back. back. The ones that are 
need to be thriving should be playing fast paced ball or being held back because they're still trying to play college structured ball mm -hmm. where you run and run a play and like we, we already see there's a rift between Jason Kidd and Luca because Jason Kidd is still a fossilized coach, but he's a player, mm -hmm. but he knows that Luca holds the ball too much, mm -hmm. right? He's not doing enough passing to get guys open well that he has to pass because he ain't open, mm -hmm. right? And so you look at these other coaches who are fossilizing, they're forcing this, the stagnant movement, guards be in the corners, Y'all do the one-on-one -on -one pick and roll <laughs> until somebody switch off. Then we're going to get a random shot and we're going to get back on defense. <laughs> like that's, that's weekend. But the teams that you see that are exciting, they moving the ball, they shooting the ball fast, they just going, they playing like we play in the summertime. Yep. And that's the, game, that's, the, that's the kind of game we grew up playing anyway. Well, so have you ever seen Ben Simmons in the summer? Going crazy. What? <laughs> going crazy. See, when, when, when I defend him, I'm like, yo, if do y'all understand how good this man is when, when he's free. Yep. He, he actually he shoots jump. On his, on his he back telling him what to do. He, he shoots, he shoots, shoots jump. <laughs> he be, he, that should be going in. You be like, Ben, you got that? Yeah, 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 it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, yo, the reason we see greatness, like I remember we watch summer basketball, right? We watch who has it. Like, like there's some superstars that's scared of what we call mediocre players Ooh. in the NBA. What Ooh, yes. NBA consider mediocre, a superstar in today's game will be scared of this mediocre player at UCLA. 100%. For sure. When there's no coaching, then no, 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 there's a when there's restraints and restraints on them. Like yeah, these dudes play free. You would never know he's a you, killer. You would yeah. never know. But that, that was even like we were coming up. I'm sure we all know dudes who could have went to the league and for whatever it may be, they couldn't, they couldn't just hang in a coach's system or deal with that bullshit mm -hmm. that comes with it. I think that's what a lot of people who don't understand, like that side of it. When you see dudes playing free in the summer and getting to do whatever they want, now you get on a team and coach is like, you can't do that shit. You yeah, can't do that. Like, but that's, but th that, what are you not seeing? That's, that's, what are you not, if this is what he's doing mm -hmm. and when he's with you, this is how he plays, who it that's your issue, coach? Yes. <laughs> yes. If he's a 99 in this type of system, Come on, and he's a 64 in yours, Come on, man. what are you doing? Come on. James Wiseman? How the hell is James Wiseman in the G League when he could be out here playing 99, running up and down with Steph Curry? A Warriors question. I'm sure Warriors it was a funny it's, it's, it's just, But, but, but you, it's how a coach can hide a player because, like you said, if you're a bad coach, he's 99 playing out here against the top mm -hmm. guys. Like, it's all-star weekend at UCLA yeah, yeah. every summer. It's like, <laughs> if you thrive in there, because guys ain't just letting you, like, who, like it's deep. They playing. Deep. Rico not going to let you out here just to yeah. be out here. Yeah. Man, you playing. And if you can thrive at UCLA, we know you're going to be an all-star. You next up. We like, oh, yeah, that's, that's him. Yeah, that's him. That's him. But, <laughs> hey, the run didn't always used to be like that, and that's what I really credit Rico for. He was my college team at UCLA, but he really brought some organization to it. And there got a point where it got sloppy. Dudes were just showing up to get a sweat and stop giving a f But now he has these dudes locked in, and literally they know they got the cameras in there. Now if you get embarrassed, like, it's yeah, going on it, the internet. Everyone sees it. It's going on the internet. <sighs> but there's, there's also things like this. A great coach might be a great guard coach. Yeah. Horrible big man coach. Absolutely. Great big man coach, horrible guard coach. Mm -hmm. Great wing coach. You know, so it's, it's we, people don't think about that. Like, you have to look at what type of a system a player, uh, a, a coach's runs to understand. Like, Golden State, we see one, two, three, they're goats. So. <laughs> Draymond Green finds his way to be great, but they've never been great at the four or five. In a sense where they've never, their four or five has never been a dominant position where we're going to get 20, yep. 20 points, 15 points out of this. No, it's, it's made for them that one, two, three. Yep. That one, two, y'all, y'all are getting that baby. You know what I mean? But that's, that's some offenses now. I like, I like those offenses compared to the ones that stagnate and, and hold the ball, mm -hmm. right? Because we so used to seeing the game being played the way, the right way. Mm -hmm. We say play the game the right way. But then we want to see an evolution of the game too. Mm -hmm. But keep the discipline. Yep. Keep the discipline. You're going to be a Chuck, you got to make them shots. If you're going to be a Chuck, right? <laughs> but if you're not, you got to show us you know the game. Mm -hmm. Show us you could play the game and not be selfish, but break the offense and 
make something happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We like those, 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 uh, I call them the, the, the master ballers. Like, you know, in game crunch time, you a gamer, mm-hmm. a master ball. We, uh, Gil got it. Yeah. We yeah. know he going to do something yeah. to either get his shot off or get somebody open. That's a gamer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and the last five minutes. We, we, we mistake a lot of like credit to certain guys for what they do based on stats instead of being a, a player, a hooper, and a gamer. Dimmer. This episode of No Chill is brought to you by The Ridge Wallet. Now that Thanksgiving is over, it's time to get your holiday shopping started, and you can't go wrong with The Ridge Wallet. I mean, seriously, who wouldn't love a Ridge Wallet for the holiday season? It holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. The wallets have over 50,000, yes, you heard that right, 50,000 five-star reviews. Now that's quality. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. This thing will be guaranteed for your entire life. Now that's a deal that is too good to pass up. In fact, the Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. But let's be real, you're gonna love it, so you're not gonna send it back. It's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpockets. If you or one of your loved ones needs a Ridge wallet, make sure you go to ridge.com slash no chill and use code no chill. So we talk about bigs now, being able to, to handle and do these things. Obviously, I don't know if you've seen Wimby ball at all. Mm-hmm. What do you think his ceiling can be in the NBA? I know everybody's super excited, but for actual hoopers that understand this game and seeing what he's doing, how do you think that's going to translate into the NBA game? If we just watch Bowl Bowl, we'll be able to see what he's going to do. Yeah. I think Bobo is one of the greatest that I've ever seen at that size and seeing him since high school. So to see another one of him that's a little bit smoother mm-hmm. and shoot that thing a little bit more, you know, automatic, yeah. that's scary, scary hours. They were creating players somewhere. You know the fun thing about Bobo is as impressive as he is, we can't be impressed because we already knew that. Yep. <laughs> Some of us did. I'm no, say, but a lot since of people, were, since high a lot of people were hating on Bo. I'm no, they were real. hating on. So they're hating on Bo. Bo. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what were they watching. It was no, 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 no. <laughs> no one's ever questioned his game. It was him. You got to remember, you're sitting what seven two seven three. Lazy as hell. Lazy as hell. Lazy as hell. <laughs> I don't want. I don't need to work I'm out. Cool, I'm man. cool, And that's what ended up happening. So you're talking about a kid who was literally supposed to be top five. Man. Better than everybody. He was. He was. Yeah, he, I mean, he had the foot injury at Oregon that, that made him drop to the second round. But there was no. There's no way he should have been a second round pick. No, it's bull ball. But so they just used it. Foot or not, they just used his demeanor towards the process. Yep. Right. The process of I don't want to. I don't need to work out for you guys. So that's what I was hearing. He was doing a lot. He didn't want to work out for certain groups. He didn't want to practice. He didn't want to train. So now watching him, I think what happened was. That, yep, yeah, that, that heat on his ass. And <laughs> Going to the D, he didn't do that. He's down there like, man, they not even looking at me. I'm still, I still can't come up there. Yeah. Then he get with the Orlando Magic with, with Pablo Boy. He look good out yeah, there. Yeah, he look, he do. I mean, it's, it's refreshing to see because a lot of people like ourselves were big on Bobo, kind of got that hate. Now a lot of people are shutting up, changing their tune, deleting a lot of tweets. I'm seeing in real life happening. Wow. <laughs> I used to, I used to ro- roll with Bobo. Bo. Oh, are you crazy? What? They're just like, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm looking at this dude, what he's mm-hmm. doing at 7'2". And to your point, he, he may he not the screamer, yeller, whatever. He may not look like he, he care, mm-hmm. but shit, when I see him push that ball up the court and shoot threes and do all that other shit, like, this man now, cares. Now, now it, makes, it makes us wonder. Denver. I was just thinking of that. <laughs> n- now him, Jokic. MP3, MP, what was y'all thinking? And uh, Murray. What? What? Huh? Y'all <laughs> gave him away. Sure. You gave Bobo. Oh, I mean, you just look at that squad. I That's- guess sometimes, I guess sometimes when kids come in so young, you know, we have that type of league where you have two to three years to, to show me something. If you don't show me something, then I want to get rid of you. Not knowing that maybe that fourth year he needed that. Nah. 
to turn it over. This is what we were talking about earlier. Coaches lead, players lead. Players lead, not going to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. Mobile play right away. Why, we, why did we get him in the first round? Why did we make sure? We got him for a reason. Mm -hmm. And if he's good enough to go out there and showcase his skill and play, let him play. Yeah. A player's going to know that. Yeah. We're not on the stubborn ass, well, I'm coach. I don't like rookies playing and let them play oh in second God. half only and second quarter only. I've been a part of that. Yeah. That's some bullshit. <laughs> you're right. You're, <laughs> nah, you're right. That's some bullshit. You're right. And then it, it don't make them look no better as a coach. You're still a dummy. You still don't know X's and O's because you're letting the players who can play who proven practice they deserve, you don't even give him a shot. You got this man in the G League. How? You got James Wildman in the G League? How bad? He's better than the Zubac is playing, bro. Like, this is all the guys is like, what? The other guards like uh, Hanley, uh, Hardy, Hardy. He scored like 40-something last night. Like, why are these kids in the G League? Stop this shit. <laughs> Stop this shit already. Stop like, your team ain't that good for that kid to be. He should be getting, but that's... The whole, the whole theory of this, 2005, 2000, you came in 2005, 2006, right? Yep. Yep. So after my rookie season, um, draft is coming up, right? This is where Yao Ming, uh, Jay Will, right? Jay Will and Dunleavy, mm -hmm. right? Top three. Golden State tells me, there's like, <clears throat> I remember Otis, he was like, uh, yeah, we're trying to get the number two pick. We need a, a guard. I just, I'm, I am the point guard. What are you talking about? I'm rookie of the month. It's like, right? I'm rookie. I was rookie of the month at the end. This is what I left with, you know? And then it was like, yeah, but he's the number two pick. So I said, what if I beat him out? What if he can't beat me? They was like, he's the number two pick. Mm. Now that's cool. But mm. if he's not better than me, he gets in front of me. They said, with the number two pick in the NBA draft, he automatically gets the starting position. And I said, even if he's not better than me. I said, how do I keep my spot? They said, you're going to have to triple his production. Mm. Not double. You got to triple. triple. It. it has to be such a distance. And, I, and he said this, even with a distance, you're still splitting time. Number two pick. Number two pick. Is that more it's, ego shit? Cause they feel like they're gonna look bad. Cause for me, no, like, no, no. look, we got we got to steal with Gil. Only gonna number two, whatever you do. Think about this. It's like it's business, but for Hooper, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. If I make five hundred thousand, and he makes twenty million, my talent has no. He getting on that court. I'm putting my twenty million in. Hundred percent. I had that conversation. <laughs> uh, rookie transition uh, program, the RTP shit that we have, every rookie mm -hmm. has to go through it, right? So Dante was speaking at ours, and Dante got up there, and it was after his rookie year. And he said that, he said, I don't know, y'all think it's sweet up here, but y'all gonna go through some, some shit that's gonna bother you a lot. Mm -hmm. He said, you're gonna be kicking that, that dude's ass that's in front of you, you're gonna be kicking his every single practice, you're gonna be smoking him, mm -hmm. and you're not gonna see the floor. And everybody laughing, but he's straight face like, <laughs> y'all think I'm playing, y'all think I'm playing. Like, you're gonna be killing, and you're not gonna see the floor, and it's gonna bother you. Uh -huh. And he was like, don't re listen to me very carefully, he said, the reason is because that guy getting paid 15 million, and you are a rookie. Mm -hmm. They gotta pay that man. Yeah. And if he ain't on the floor, that coach is getting that ear full. Coach don't want to hear that. Play the play the young fella or play the old fella. Whoever it is to play, that's who you play. Whoever you paying, that's who you playing. Shit, I got hit with even one worse. Said, <laughs> you killing him in practice, huh? Like hell yeah. How much you get paid for practice? <laughs> uh, I don't know how my contract works, but uh, I think zero. Exactly. I don't give a what you do to him in practice. Are you gonna are you gonna outplay him in the game? I was like, if you give me some time. <laughs> nah, nah. He he said those what, who you think you're better than gets played to perform in a game. Mm. You here to do whatever you want to do in practice, and I'm sitting here like, I, I was I got depressed. Like I ain't gonna never crack this. I didn't know how to take it my rookie year because a lot of people don't know they ain't really it ain't we didn't come up in the YouTube era, so it ain't a lot of like a, the low level stats that can come up or highlights, but like I used to run the second quarter. Like the second quarter was mine. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Every single team, right? <laughs> Cause I had to go against up, you guys were like, every two guard in the league was stacked. 
Mm -hmm. So it was a hard night for me regardless yeah, yeah, yeah. whenever I got in. But when I got in against y'all second unit, whatever team, <laughs> oh, it was lunch time. <laughs> yeah. I knew I had my night or wh whoever I had in the, in the starter. I knew I had, but whoever was on that bench, mm -hmm. lights mm -hmm. out. So the second quarter was my quarter. Mm -hmm. and the coaches would hate to call my number because I was, I was so efficient with the points per minute. Like, mm -hmm. I had to get mine off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. knew, like, if I wasn't going to play the second half, I was only going to play the second quarter. So I, at one point, I averaged, like, 12, 12 points for the second quarter. And that was, like, 2006. See, that's bullshit. Yeah, I was, like, how do you I was, not, how, how does that not register? If he's scoring 12 points in a quarter, uh, Dwayne Casey was brand new as a, as a head coach coming from under Nate McMillan. I hate them. Right? Yeah. And so he had the old school mentality. And KG kind of bought into that shit. It kind of pissed me off, too, because he didn't trust me, right? Yeah. And he wanted to, but I wasn't spree. He mm -hmm. needed another spree, yeah. right? But I had the talent, but I was just young. He's like, I can't trust this young nigga. And, and Wally... You know, he... He was a Zerbiac. Wally, you know, he wanted to chase through. He was Clay yeah, before yeah, yeah, Clay. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Clay. Like, man, people don't know Wally was Clay before yeah. Clay. So for me to get... He chased man, that ball, What? Boy. He will take it out your man, hand yeah. and shoot it. Like, and so I had to find... When I was finding my niche and, like, really, like, tickets started to see and everybody started... Dwayne Casey just didn't know what to do, right? He didn't believe in rookies. He didn't... Mm -hmm. It wasn't nothing about that. He was trying to get his thing with, with tickets. Okay. So... It was like, once you get that coach that don't understand how it is to be a player, like, you can help the team win down the stretch and get stuck down the mm. stretch because you got Trent Housel in the game. And you know what I'm saying? Like, you going, you giving up another 12 points just because you want, like, you know, you want to make sure a ticket is good because Trent and his tickets, man, and Trent is a defensive stopper, but not really, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I love these. I'm just he was my, listen, he was drafted in front of me. So I, know, I already know you got issues. Oh, Lord. Yeah. All right, no, Trent had a game, me. man. He was, he was all right, man. I mean, he was, he wasn't no game. goddamn Gilbert. No, no, I'm saying, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Who looking no Gilbert well, you know, now? Well, you know me. It's like you're good in, up until a certain point in the game. Then you're, you're actually uh, uh, you're, not val you're not as valuable as you thought you were. Right. Like, like a, just a straight defensive player, right? Just, they can't put the ball in the basket. They have no interest in putting the ball in the basket. When the last five minutes come in the game, right, why do I have you on the court to stop a pure offensive score, right? You're gonna score zero to two points. He's gonna have 10 to 14 points. How, like, that's, I need to match his score. I need to close this gap. Yep. Because on defense, if I can't shoot, what the hell are you doing on defense? <laughs> Spaced out. I'm, I'm chilling. Yeah, you're chilling. I'm about to recharge for the second, the second attempt. I ain't got to guard this man right here. Give it back. Give it and, back. And that's what they don't understand, that you think you're, you're getting him tired, but you're not realizing because this man cannot score the ball, wow. he, gets to, he gets to rest. Genius. He gets the rest. <laughs> this I, is what he think about when he playing. Yes, like, if I, wanna, I ain't got to guard you. I'm about yeah, to <laughs> guard you. If I, if I want to get you tired, I need to curry. Run him. Run around. Get him tired. Like, like yeah, he's going to post him up. On offense, I want him to run through these screens. Let him hit some of these screens. Mm -hmm. So that's his. That's the defense. The defense is not putting him on some guy who just sits in the corner. And I don't really got to do wow. nothing. You guard, you're guard. you guarding your own self at this point. So it's like when teams do that. Like I remember, like even with our, our Lakers. You got three people on there that don't shoot the ball. Come on, man. That means we have two offensive players playing against five defensive players. How? Makes no sense. How? It's the wrong player coach. <laughs> it's the wrong player you coach, know though. Time it is. You know You got to step into the fold. But, Rashad, I want to ask you, how tough is that going from being, being the man of UNC, winning the national championship? Now you got to come to the league and really try to earn it again, playing on the squad with Kevin Garnett. Obviously, it's his team and trying to earn his loyalty, his trust. That, that you could be out there on the floor with him? Um, it was more winning about, you know, for me, it was how we wanted Carolina and the mentality we had, right? Coming into the league and starting that over, just kind of like leaving high school to college. Yeah. You finding out it's kind of done a different way. You're like, damn, I don't even got to do that much in here. We ain't got to do shit. Okay, cool. You get to the league, you're like, man, we got to do everything on your own. Like, you got to get your work in. Yeah. Like, ain't, like, it's up to you. 
first thing I learned was it was a man's league. So all they kept saying, it's a man's league, youngin. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, we, we ain't tolerating none of this cry, baby. We ain't babysitting you. You learn the plays, you don't get them wrong, you don't play. Get your schemes right, mm-hmm. learn, learn, learn everything. So Ticket became the homie right away. So uh, he took me under his wing, showed me everything. Um, man, I got to really let loose because of Ticket, you know, his, his personality mm-hmm. is one that people don't understand, right? Because he go off on the hinges all the time. He high energy all the time. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he told me the secret to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to, once you start something, you can't tone it down. You got to be consistent. Mm-hmm. So being able to see him react and do and talk shit and do all that, and that's how I played. Yeah, yeah. And so it brought a lot of that out on me. So when I checked in the game, I was bumping What's up? Mm. Yeah, foul right here. I got my first one. I got six more. <laughs> yeah, five yeah, more. I got five more. more. Like, that was my whole thing. Whoever I was guarding, I wanted them to know, like, I got to make a name for myself, right? And I got to let the referees know how I'm going to play ball on the um, defensive side. Mm. And I got to let these, these dudes that's guarding me know, hey, when I'm in the game, ain't no rest for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 this yeah, ain't yeah. no rest if you, you down here torture him, you come down here on me. Oh, it's, it's, it's up. It's up. I'm going at your neck. So uh, that was always my mentality. And, Going from college to pro was literally like a wake up call from basketball to business. You learn it's a business. It's not it's not the game that you played, that you love, that you grew up, you learn that. You cannot play because you don't come in here and shake this person's hand mm-hmm. or you don't smile or you're not participating in this. NBA cares or just like things that could pile up to things. It's like, well, he's not really engaging. He don't smile much. The guys really don't interact with him. So you got to kind of play both games. You got to be the locker room guy. You got to be the community guy. You got to learn what the game is being played. Because a lot of times the guys will say, man, you got to play the game. Play the game within the game. And you ask, <laughs> what, the, what the hell is the game? And everybody give you the same answer. Like, you know, you know. <laughs> you know. You know the game, man. You know, no, I don't. don't. <laughs> so you wait till you, you know, 20 years down the line, and you sitting there and you looking like, so this is the game. That was the game. That's all I had to do. Shut the up. Yeah. Just shut up. No. Just shut up and collect your bread and, and the, do your thing. And get your on the certain teams, right? So I remember, I remember watching your swag and attitude, right? And it's only, it's only great when you're winning, right? When you're winning, he's a winner. <laughs> he's a winner. He has the winning spirit, attitude, mm-hmm. the winning spirit. Like when you're on the losing team and you got a bunch of f-ing losers on your team, a bunch of people who don't know how to work, wow. it rubs them the wrong way. Wow. Oh, he's just a bad attitude. He's a bad apple. He wants to come in and work early. He wants to come in and take extra shots. He telling me I ain't passing the ball enough. He telling me I ain't playing defense. I don't want to play with this guy. What? Think about Jimmy Butler. Bad locker room guy in Chicago. Bad locker room game, uh, guy in Minnesota. Now he's a hell of a player in Miami. How? How does it change? Oh, because that's a winning program. That's what they want. That's what they want. Yes, you got to remember, lazy don't want to be told they're lazy. Accountability. They, we don't want to be accountable. And, and, I, I'm not, not even going to lie. In, anything in life. Listen, anything. Any industry, listen, anything. If there's 400 players, bro, if there's 400 players, 400 don't really want to be accountable if you to try to put them accountable for something. Like, if I shot the ball 30 times, I know I shot the ball 30 times. Don't tell me don't I shot the ball. <laughs> don't tell me I shot I the ball. I remember every 30, I, I, every single one, I remember where I shot them. I remember I looked you up, but don't tell me I did that. You hurt my feelings. Like you, Cause you're making me feel like I'm human when I have this, this, this when you feel like you goaded. You gotta remember when you're, in the, when you're in the sport, when you're in the locker room, it's we're animals. Yes. This, is, this is the jungle. So the way I walk in here, the way I talk in here, the way I move in here, I'm moving in this motherfucker a certain way for a reason, mm. right? So what happens is if you got, a bunch of, you got a bunch of players that think they're lions, but they're really gazelles, the gazelles team up. <laughs> ah, we don't, we don't like them. 
Ah, he, all right, come on, we don't, you see, we don't hang out with him. Because y'all don't want to, y'all don't want to work out. So why the fuck am I going to pass y'all the ball, shake y'all hands and shit when you, you come in? What the fuck? Dude, I ain't shaking his hand. I'm going to look. Oh, man. It's not like I have a bad attitude. I know his work ethic. That work ethic. Let him keep walking. But that's. Bro, I got to ask both of you. Am I right, though? Bro, listen. Because this I see it. This is gospel. No, it's for, I seen it. That's why I was like, yo, he has a winning attitude. Like, I, like I don't want him guarding me. <laughs> I, call, I call it prodigy shit, bro, because only a real gamer can talk about it from that perspective. Like, you've had to have had pressure on you to be able to talk about it from a perspective of, I know it's on me. I know it's on me. I'm goaded for a reason. I ain't, I'm not the guy that's trying to be the goat. I'm trying to be the goat herder. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell the goats where to go. Y'all follow me, mm -hmm. right? Be the leader of the leaders, mm -hmm. right? And be able to have that is like, to know like, you've been here. We've been here. We've been at the top. We always had the skill set that everybody respect. And everybody's like, hey man, that's one of them ones. Like, he understand it. Mm -hmm. He understand how it's supposed to be done. You come in here and you lock in. And there's only a few of them that can actually lock okay. in and be like, yeah, this, this, this is not only the night, but every night is the night whenever I want it to be, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the, it's the camaraderie. How does the locker room feel about that energy when you're losing? Are you, when you lose by 30 and Kobe has 60 and anybody, I feel any smile around energy <laughs> in the locker room, I'm done. Because yeah. he's not even smiling. I, he has 60. He, he, mad, he mad that they that we gave up. Yeah. yeah. Kobe like, man, they gave up too early. I could have had 90 yeah. on them if yeah. they'd have known that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, if I'd have known that. And I'm over here like, I only got to guard him six times, but he scored once. Coach, leave me in a little bit longer. Mm. Let me get some more see, of that. But see, that's, I want that. I want some more of that. See, so, but that's accountability. I want to ask both of y'all. You said 400 players in the league, right? How many of you guys do you think are actually winners? And I'm not talking about winners by association because they play on winning teams where they're, they're led by these, these goal level guys like you, you're talking you, about. How many, how, what percentage of the you, league you, do you actually feel like is winners? It's hard to really know until you get inside that locker room because you got to remember, there's a guy who's on the last team in the NBA who can't sleep at night because of what's going on. It's so bad. He's cr he cringes, like it hurts. You gotta remember, you've been on a team, y'all lost by 30, then they're like, yeah, uh, we gonna go to, yeah, I'm gonna be at the West today, meet me at the hotel. You got those guys, right? And then you got guys who sitting there like irritated, like, but if I say something, they're gonna find me, they're gonna kick me off the Man. team. You gotta remember, you gotta remember, that's a winning attitude. He's just not in a winning situation, mm -hmm. right? So his, his attitude comes off bad to the rest of this group. Absolutely. He is getting, the winner is being moved. We don't want this guy. Yeah. We want everybody here to be comfortable. Yep. Right? So it's really hard, it's really hard to know until you go into a locker room and watch a game, watch a team lose, and then look at the locker room and see what happens. Mm. Mm. Right, because you can have a guy who's out there averaging 30. That's just his gift. He don't really give a about the win or not. He's not a winner. That's he what don't give a he fuck. Doesn't but he can win. They, you can be a, this winner's on championship team. That nigga ain't no winner. He's just on a team he that, that team. was just great. Yep. yep. He, yep. the, the team was just great. He was part of the greatness of that team. But as a winner, mm, winner is willing to get better, willing to push, push the mediocre guys to get better. So we would say Draymond Green is a winner. winner. Yeah. Yep. Right? Yeah. Patrick Beverly, that's a winner. Jimmy yep. Butler, that's a winner. When you're talking about certain type of winning. You know why though? They have the veteran spirit. Mm -hmm of a real vet, right? You look at how the vets came in and they gave you that accountability, mm -hmm. right? Young fella, you gotta play the game the right way. Don't f the game, the game, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do it right, right? So you got your veteran spirit. That's the Pat Beverly's, the, mm -hmm. the Draymond Green's where it's accountability mm -hmm. first. Like, I'm gonna yell at you, Steph. Like you, you should mm -hmm. yell at me, right? Don't, don't not yell at me because I'm the verbal one mm -hmm. and I'm always verbal. 
I took on that on, like early on in college of being the verbal talk on defense guy. You talk on defense, everybody assume you're the leader because mm-hmm. you're the only one talking. Nobody likes to talk on defense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody like. But if you're the only one, I got help. I got this. They like he must be the guy. Mm-hmm. He talking to the refs. He talking to everybody. But that's where you assume that veteran role, that energy of man. Let me tell y'all how to do this. This is how mm-hmm. we're gonna do. We're gonna huddle up. We're gonna call this play before we call the play. We're gonna run this shit. We're gonna give it the counter to Gilbert. And, all right, one, two, three, let's go. Mm-hmm. It's the energy. It's like everybody now, if we get down, we need to come pump us up. Yeah. We need that, 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 that yeah. energy. That's that leadership. And every team in the NBA lack that because, one, they don't want the vets to come around and teach the game the right way. But then, two, it's just the lack of accountability. When you can go out there and turn the ball over and nobody say nothing to you because of who you are. Like, Durant, LeBron, all like you shouldn't Westbrook. You shouldn't have possessions where somebody go back door and you just standing there like a cinder block, and then they lay that thing up and it's just like nobody saying nothing. Ain't no timeout. Y'all ain't going ahead. Yeah. Ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Just like it didn't happen. It didn't happen. But we lose by four, yeah. and you did that twice, and then nobody saying that. We lost by four. You got two bad defensive possessions. Mm-hmm. You supposed to be all defense. Yeah. You got to make it make sense to me. So I always look at it like the veteran spirit now is lessened because they won't let the vet stay in the game long enough to show these players the accountability. Like, yo, you got to have discipline. You good. You talented. But you don't know how to play. Is it because the, they make too much money in this ego? So, like, take – you remember when Hassan and Jimmy Butler got into that, that – that, mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. what if Haslam was on a team like the Pelicans? And that was like BJ or Zion Williams. He gone. Yeah. No more breath for you. Has him gone. Yeah. Yeah. Because that team ain't built like that yet. People don't realize we're not talking about, see, before before you got here, before you came into the NBA, my draft was the high school draft, right? That was the first of a group of high school. So those first 10, 12 picks, then 19, the average, the average age is like 19 and a half, mm. right? Before that, you're talking about 21, 22-year-old guys, 20-year-old guys coming into the NBA. So usually there was one young player on a team where that one person, right, that, that Kobe Bryant has to be this, this yeah. you know what I mean? Yep, yep. You know, so he has to adult fast. Real fast. He don't have no, he can't play the young card. When I came in, it's me, Jason Richardson, Troy Murphy. The next year, Dunleavy and Yuri. So there's out of out of 15 guys, six of them are the, under the age of 20. 20. Man. So that's a whole different. That's a whole different locker room. Don't tell me shit. You can a veteran can't tell me shit. No. Go get some cookies. You and them cookies. <laughs> like, real quick, real quick. Like, right? You gotta remember, my first year, beat up. Second year, more young. You can't tell that shit. Ain't mm-hmm. nobody get no goddamn cookies for you, boy. Really? But, <laughs> but that's what ends up happening. There's so many young kids in the NBA that you don't want to be a veteran. Oh man. What you gonna tell them? Hey, come on, hey young. Man, shut your old ass up. <laughs> you already know. We we did it. <laughs> but I couldn't wait to be a vet. I know. The way they treated me, I couldn't wait to be a vet. I was like, I can't wait to make this so much hell on the next. Ooh, you gonna hate me? Ooh. But Ooh. then, but then they deal with one of us, a hard-headed person who don't want to listen because mm. we didn't want to listen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's the unfortunate part about it because it's like I think it's something that they should go through, especially like the small hazing part because it lets you know that the vets care. Like. Like, we care about you, young fella, but look, go get all of those balls. Go, hey, everybody <laughs> kick the balls in the Use balls in the fence. Right, go get them all. Bring them back down. Go get them all. Let me, we're going to do a little stuff to you to make you mad, but that's showing that's tough love. Yeah. That's really what I felt from, from, from my experience was, like, they accepted me once I passed the test. Mm-hmm. It was like, all right, young fella ain't one of those that is going gonna, is gonna to refuse it uh-huh. and make it hard on us. Like, hey, young fella. When we tell you go do something, yeah. you better go do it. We're not going to whoop your ass nothing, but look, we're going to blackball you. Uh-huh. Like, you're not coming with us to eat on the trips. Bruh. You're not getting the lobs from the big jump. Like, I got a lot of lobs <laughs> for just, you know, doing my part. Like, hey, go get the condoms, go, you know, go get the, go get the beer, go get the, go get the pizza, go. Yeah. All right, I got you. The, 
All ticket money was donuts in the morning. Yeah. Bring the donuts, young, and don't forget them. Don't, don't, yeah. He didn't even eat them. He didn't, didn't even eat them. He threw them away. He literally got them and threw them every morning. He threw them all away. I'm like, does somebody have a donut? No. Can somebody have a donut? No, no, no. no, 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 no KG, can somebody have a donut? Of, what, nobody. Here, hey, see. don't y'all touch them. God, God damn it. <laughs> move, 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 move. Throwing them shits away. What it is? What wrong with you? He, gave, he gave him a responsibility. He gave him an assignment, a responsibility. I want to see if he can complete this. This is, you got to remember, there's games that we play with each other that seems like it has nothing to do with nothing, but it does. I'm telling, I'm giving him a job, one job, get the donuts every morning, yes. right? I want to see, if I ask him 82 times, I want to see if he does it 82 times. If he can do it 82 times, I can trust his work ethic. But I can it, trust him. Was it a particular donut order? Was it just a hodgepodge? Regular glaze, Krispy Kreme. Okay. okay. Ooh. Yeah, In he the morning, 8 a.m. Yeah. though, fresh off the joint. He knew if I cheated, I got cheated a couple times. And they weren't warm? No, I, I got them the night before. Okay. And the, and the, and the glaze dripped off of it, <laughs> right? So it wasn't like fresh Look glaze. Good. And he opened the box. <laughs> he opened the box and he, he went crazy, man. Like, ticket is a crate, but like that, once you pass that threshold, like I seen that he opened up his Rolodex for me. Mm -hmm. like, he opened up his, like, I can trust young fella, like, come to the crib. Yep. Like, we're going out, you know, meet me here. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm the buddy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, when you feel that, it's like I did pass the test. I'm, I'm whatever you need, take it. I'm the little bodyguard. Yeah, I'm, yeah, little, yeah. I'm little Marlo with the Jones. Like, what's up? What, what we need? What we but going? People don't no autograph. He ain't getting no autograph. Stop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> listen, play, people, before NBA security got into the NBA, a teammate was the bodyguard. 100%. That's real. Now think about it. How can I trust just any old teammate if I didn't put him through shit? How do I know he's a rider if I didn't put him through shit? So if I'm going to the club and somebody try to stick me up, is this man gonna run? I done tested him all year. I know he ain't gonna run now. Man, we come are. on, come on, young fella. Hey, hold my jewelry. Got yeah, this bag full of money. Man, you we remember? literally there thinking like we gotta protect Gil. <laughs> and if it ain't a we, it's a I got to. <laughs> it's a, all right. I ain't even having no fun. <laughs> no fun. Like, literally, it's the night I'm choosing. I'm like, man, it's a bad was in here, but I know if I'm off tilt and I miss the shot, he gonna be pissed. He ain't never gonna party with me. He never gonna call me. I gotta be on my 10 toes. Like, especially with, like, a nigga like Ticket. Like, he was always precise, strategic. You know what I'm saying? It was never, like, he wanted to be out in the public. And it was always duck off. Uh -huh. So I made sure, like, you know, I was always ahead of him. Two, one or two steps, like, nah, we got that. Nah, it's all good. I done already peaked the little situation. We good. <laughs> I done made sure ain't nobody out here, Tiggy. We good. We good. So that gave it, you know, the other sense of trust for him. Like, yo, I can show you the world now. I can show you how we do on the off season. Like, yeah, this how you move this way. This is, you need to count. You need to get this. You need a manager. You need, yeah. it was like, yo, that's what the NBA brotherhood that you can feel when you top tier or trying to get to that level. A lot of guys don't be understanding. They might not know my name and those lights, but I was next up. I got pushed out. So all the things that Gil know as far as being an all-star, all of the, mm -hmm. if there's a line for that, you put in a line and there's an expectation. Sometimes yeah. you get knocked off that line mm -hmm. because that expectation is now out the window. It's unreachable. Mm -hmm. But at one point you was climbing that ladder and you was trying to get to that next level. And everybody that you look like, I look at CP, I look at Carmelo, these are guys in my class, Amari is my class. I'm like, man, I was right there with them. I was right there with, I messed it up. Mm -hmm. I'm accountable for, for my mistakes.